Behavioral Genetics, Wikipedia Article Audio Behavioral Genetics or Behavioral Genetics, also referred to as Behavior Genetics, is a field of scientific research that uses genetic methods to investigate the nature and origins of individual differences in behavior. While the name behavioral genetics connotes a focus on genetic influences, the field broadly investigates genetic and environmental influences, using research designs that allow removal of the confounding of genes and environment. Behavioral genetics was founded as a scientific discipline by Francis Galton in the late 19th century, only to be discredited through association with eugenics movements before and during World War II. In the latter half of the 20th century, the field saw renewed prominence with research on inheritance of behavior and mental illness in humans as well as research on genetically informative model organisms through selective breeding and crosses. In the late 20th and early 21st centuries, technological advances in molecular genetics made it possible to measure and modify the genome directly. This led to major advances in model organism research and in human studies, leading to new scientific discoveries. Findings from behavioral genetic research have broadly impacted modern understanding of the role of genetic and environmental influences on behavior. These include evidence that nearly all researched behaviors are under a significant degree of genetic influence, and that influence tends to increase as individuals develop into adulthood. Further, most researched human behaviors are influenced by a very large number of genes and the individual effects of these genes are very small. Environmental influences also play a strong role, but they tend to make family members more different from one another, not more similar. History Methods Selective breeding and the domestication of animals is perhaps the earliest evidence that humans considered the idea that individual differences in behavior could be due to natural causes. Plato and Aristotle each speculated on the basis and mechanisms of inheritance of behavioral characteristics. Plato, for example, argued in the Republic that selective breeding among the citizenry to encourage the development of some traits and discourage others, what today might be called eugenics, was to be encouraged in the pursuit of an ideal society. Behavioral genetic concepts also existed during the English Renaissance, where William Shakespeare perhaps first coined the terms nature versus nurture in The Tempest, where he wrote in Act 4, Scene I, that Caliban was a devil, a born devil, on whose nature nurture can never stick. Modern-day behavioral genetics began with Sir Francis Galton, a 19th-century intellectual and cousin of Charles Darwin. Galton was a polymath who studied many things, including the heritability of human abilities and mental characteristics. One of Galton's investigations involved a large pedigree study of social and intellectual achievement in the English upper class. In 1869, ten years after Darwin's Origin of the Species, Galton published his results in Hereditary Genius. In this work, Galton found that the rate of eminence was highest among close relatives of eminent individuals and decreased as the degree of relationship to eminent individuals decreased. While Galton could not rule out the role of environmental influences on eminence, a fact which he acknowledged, the study served to initiate an important debate about the relative roles of genes and environment on behavioral characteristics. Through his work, Galton also introduced multivariate analysis and paved the way towards modern Bayesian statistics that are used throughout the sciences launching what has been dubbed the Statistical Enlightenment. The field of behavioral genetics, as founded by Galton, was ultimately undermined by another of Galton's intellectual contributions, 
the founding of the eugenics movement in 20th century society. The primary idea behind eugenics was to use selective breeding combined with knowledge about the inheritance of behavior to improve the human species. The eugenics movement was subsequently discredited by scientific corruption and genocidal actions in Nazi Germany. Behavioral genetics was thereby discredited through its association to eugenics. The field once again gained status as a distinct scientific discipline through the publication of early texts on behavioral genetics, such as Calvin S. Hall's 1951 book Chapter on Behavioral Genetics, in which he introduced the term psychogenetics which enjoyed some limited popularity in the 1960s and 1970s. However, it eventually disappeared from usage in favor of behavior genetics. The start of behavior genetics as a well-identified field was marked by the publication in 1960 of the book Behavior Genetics by John L. Fuller and William Robert Thompson. It is widely accepted now that many if not most behaviors in animals and humans are under significant genetic influence, although the extent of genetic influence for any particular trait can differ widely. A decade later, in February 1970, the first issue of the journal Behavior Genetics was published and in 1972 the Behavior Genetics Association was formed with Theodosius Dobbs Hansky elected as the association's first president. The field has since grown and diversified, touching many scientific disciplines. Behavioral genetic research and findings have at times been controversial. Some of this controversy has arisen because behavioral genetic findings can challenge societal beliefs about the nature of human behavior and abilities, other controversies have arisen due to misunderstandings of behavioral genetic research, whether by the lay public or the researchers themselves. Major areas of controversy have included genetic research on topics such as racial differences, intelligence, violence, and human sexuality. Animal Studies The primary goal of behavioral genetics is to investigate the nature and origins of individual differences in behavior. A wide variety of different methodological approaches are used in behavioral genetic research only a few of which are outlined below. In animal research selection experiments have often been employed. For example, laboratory house mice have been bred for open field behavior, thermoregulatory nesting, and voluntary wheel running behavior. A range of methods in these designs are covered on those pages. Twin and Family Studies Behavioral geneticists using model organisms employ a range of molecular techniques to alter, insert, or delete genes. These techniques include knockouts, floxing, gene knockdown, or genome editing using methods like CRISPR-Cas9. These techniques allow behavioral geneticists different levels of control in the model organism's genome, to evaluate the molecular, physiological, or behavioral outcome of genetic changes. One research design used in behavioral genetic research are variations on family designs, including twin studies and adoption studies. Quantitative genetic modeling of individuals with known genetic relationships allows one to estimate to what extent genes and environment contribute to phenotypic differences among individuals. The basic intuition of the twin study is that monozygotic twins share 100% of their genome and dizygotic twins share, on average, 50% of their segregating genome. Thus, Differences between the two members of a monozygotic twin pair can only be due to differences in their environment, whereas dizygotic twins will differ from one another due to environment as well as genes. Under this simplistic model, if dizygotic twins differ more than monozygotic twins it can only be attributable to genetic influences. 
An important assumption of the twin model is the equal environment assumption that monozygotic twins have the same shared environmental experiences as dizygotic twins. If, for example, monozygotic twins tend to have more similar experiences than dizygotic twins and these experiences themselves are not genetically mediated through gene environment correlation mechanisms then monozygotic twins will tend to be more similar to one another than dizygotic twins for reasons that have nothing to do with genes. Twin studies of monozygotic and dizygotic twins use a biometrical formulation to describe the influences on twin similarity and to infer heritability. The formulation rests on the basic observation that the variance in a phenotype is due to two sources, genes, and environment. More formally, V, A, R, P, equals, G, plus, G, times, plus, where p, is the phenotype, g, is the effect of genes, is the effect of the environment, and, g, times, is a gene by environment interaction. The, g, term can be expanded to include additive, a, 2, dominance, d, 2, and epistatic, i, 2, genetic effects. Similarly, the environmental term, can be expanded to include shared environment, C, 2, and non-shared environment, E, 2, which includes any measurement error. Dropping the gene by environment interaction for simplicity and fully decomposing the, G, and, terms, we now have, V, A, R, P, equals, a, 2, plus, D, 2, plus, I, 2, plus, C, 2, plus, E, 2. Twin research then models the similarity in monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins using simplified forms of this decomposition, shown in the table. Measured genetic variants the simplified Falconer formulation can then be used to derive estimates of A, 2, C, 2, and E, 2. Rearranging and substituting the R, M, Z, and R, D, Z equations one can obtain an estimate of the additive genetic variance, or heritability, A, 2, equals, 2. R, M, Z, R, D, Z, equals 2, the non-shared environmental effect, E, 2, equals, 1, R, M, Z, equals 1, R, and, finally, the shared environmental effect, C, 2, equals, R, M, Z, A, 2, equals R, A. The Falconer formulation is presented here to illustrate how the twin model works. Modern approaches use maximum likelihood to estimate the genetic and environmental variance components. Quasi-experimental designs The Human Genome Project has allowed scientists to directly genotype the sequence of human DNA nucleotides. Once genotyped, Genetic variants can be tested for association with a behavioral phenotype, such as mental disorder, cognitive ability, personality, and so on. General Findings Some behavioral genetic designs are useful not to understand genetic influences on behavior, but to control for genetic influences to test environmentally mediated influences on behavior. Such behavioral genetic designs may be considered a subset of natural experiments, quasi-experiments that attempt to take advantage of naturally occurring situations that mimic true experiments by providing some control over an independent variable. Natural experiments can be particularly useful when experiments are infeasible, due to practical or ethical limitations.
A general limitation of observational studies is that the relative influences of genes and environment are confounded. A simple demonstration of this fact is that measures of environmental influence are heritable. Thus, observing a correlation between an environmental risk factor and a health outcome is not necessarily evidence for environmental influence on the health outcome. Similarly, in observational studies of parent-child behavioral transmission, for example, it is impossible to know if the transmission is due to genetic or environmental influences, due to the problem of passive gene-environment correlation. The simple observation that the children of parents who use drugs are more likely to use drugs as adults does not indicate why the children are more likely to use drugs when they grow up. It could be because the children are modeling their parents' behavior. Equally plausible, it could be that the children inherited drug use predisposing genes from their parent, which put them at increased risk for drug use as adults regardless of their parents' behavior. Adoption studies, which parse the relative effects of rearing environment and genetic inheritance, find a small to negligible effect of rearing environment on smoking, alcohol and marijuana use in adopted children, but a larger effect of rearing environment on harder drug use. Genetic influences on behavior are pervasive. Other behavioral genetic designs include discordant twin studies, children of twins designs, and Mendelian randomization. There are many broad conclusions to be drawn from behavioral genetic research about the nature and origins of behavior. Three major conclusions include, 1. All behavioral traits and disorders are influenced by genes, 2. Environmental influences tend to make members of the same family more different, rather than more similar and 3. The influence of genes tends to increase in relative importance as individuals age. It is clear from multiple lines of evidence that all researched behavioral traits and disorders are influenced by genes, that is, they are heritable. The single largest source of evidence comes from twin studies, where it is routinely observed that monozygotic twins are more similar to one another than are same-sex dizygotic twins. The conclusion that genetic influences are pervasive has also been observed in research designs that do not depend on the assumptions of the twin method. Adoption studies show that adoptees are routinely more similar to their biological relatives than their adoptive relatives for a wide variety of traits and disorders. In the Minnesota study of twins reared apart, monozygotic twins separated shortly after birth were reunited in adulthood. These adopted, reared apart twins were as similar to one another as were twins reared together on a wide range of measures including general cognitive ability, personality, religious attitudes, and vocational interests, among others. Approaches using genome-wide genotyping have allowed researchers to measure genetic relatedness between individuals and estimate heritability based on millions of genetic variants. Methods exist to test whether the extent of genetic similarity between nominally unrelated individuals is associated with phenotypic similarity. Such methods do not rely on the same assumptions as twin or adoption studies and routinely find evidence for heritability of behavioral traits and disorders. Just as all researched human behavioral phenotypes are influenced by genes, all such phenotypes are also influenced by the environment. The basic fact that monozygotic twins are genetically identical but are never perfectly concordant for psychiatric disorder or perfectly correlated for behavioral traits indicates that the environment shapes human behavior. Nature of Environmental Influence The nature of this environmental influence, however, is such that it tends to make individuals in the same family more different from one another, not more similar to one another. That is, 
estimates of shared environmental effects, c. 2, in human studies are small, negligible, or zero for the vast majority of behavioral traits and psychiatric disorders, whereas estimates of non-shared environmental effects, e. 2, are moderate to large. From twin studies, c. 2, is typically estimated at zero because the correlation, r, m, z, between monozygotic twins is at least twice the correlation, r, d, z, for dizygotic twins. When using the Falconer variance decomposition, 1.0, equals, a, 2, plus, c, 2, plus, e, 2, plus C plus C, this difference between monozygotic and dizygotic twin similarity results in an estimated, C, 2, equals, 0, equals 0. It is important to note that the Falconer decomposition is simplistic. It removes the possible influence of dominance and epistatic effects which, if present, will tend to make monozygotic twins more similar than dizygotic twins and mask the influence of shared environmental effects. This is a limitation of the twin design for estimating, c, 2. However, the general conclusion that shared environmental effects are negligible does not rest on twin studies alone. Adoption research also fails to find large, c, 2 components, that is, adoptive parents and their adopted children tend to show much less resemblance to one another than the adopted child and his or her non-rearing biological parent. In studies of adoptive families with at least one biological child and one adopted child, the sibling resemblance also tends to be nearly zero for most traits that have been studied. Nature of Genetic Influence the figure provides an example from personality research, where twin and adoption studies converge on the conclusion of zero to small influences of shared environment on broad personality traits measured by the multidimensional personality questionnaire including positive emotionality, negative emotionality, and constraint. Candidate Genes one popular approach has been to test for association candidate genes with behavioral phenotypes, where the candidate gene is selected based on some a priori theory about biological mechanisms involved in the manifestation of a behavioral trait or phenotype. In general, such studies have proven difficult to broadly replicate and there has been concern raised that the false positive rate in this type of research is high genome-wide association studies. In genome-wide association studies, researchers test the relationship of millions of genetic polymorphisms with behavioral phenotypes across the genome. This approach to genetic association studies is largely a-theoretical, and typically not guided by a particular biological hypothesis regarding the phenotype. Genetic association findings for behavioral traits and psychiatric disorders have been found to be highly polygenic, SNP heritability and CO heritability. Recently, researchers have begun to use similarity between classically unrelated people at their measured single nucleotide polymorphisms to estimate genetic variation or covariation that is tagged by SNPs using mixed-effects models implemented in software such as genome-wide complex trait analysis. To do this, researchers find the average genetic relatedness over all SNPs between all individuals in a sample, and use hazeman elston regression or restricted maximum likelihood to estimate the genetic variation that is tagged by, or predicted by, the SNPs. The proportion of phenotypic variation that is accounted for by the genetic relatedness has been called SNP heritability. Intuitively, SNP heritability increases to the degree that phenotypic similarity is predicted by genetic similarity at measured SNPs, 
and is expected to be lower than the true narrow sense heritability to the degree that measured SNPs fail to tag causal variance. The value of this method is that it is an independent way to estimate heritability that does not require the same assumptions as those in twin and family studies, and that it gives insight into the allelic frequency spectrum of the causal variance underlying trait variation. Given the conclusion that all researched behavioral traits and psychiatric disorders are heritable, biological siblings will always tend to be more similar to one another than will adopted siblings. However, for some traits, especially when measured during adolescence, adopted siblings do show some significant similarity to one another. Traits that have been demonstrated to have significant shared environmental influences include internalizing and externalizing psychopathology, substance use, and dependence, and intelligence. Genetic effects on human behavioral outcomes can be described in multiple ways. One way to describe the effect is in terms of how much variance in the behavior can be accounted for by alleles in the genetic variant otherwise known as the coefficient of determination or, R, 2. An intuitive way to think about, R, 2, is that it describes the extent to which the genetic variant makes individuals, who harbor different alleles, different from one another on the behavioral outcome. A complementary way to describe effects of individual genetic variants is in how much change one expects on the behavioral outcome given a change in the number of risk alleles an individual harbors, often denoted by the Greek letter, beta, or, in the case of binary disease outcomes by the odds ratio, O, R, of disease given allele status. Note the difference, R, 2 describes the population level effect of alleles within a genetic variant, beta, or, o, r, describe the effect of having a risk allele on the individual who harbors it, relative to an individual who does not harbor a risk allele. When described on the, r, 2, metric, the effects of individual genetic variants on complex human behavioral traits and disorders are vanishingly small, with each variant accounting for, R, 2, 0.3 backslash percent, of variation in the phenotype. This fact has been discovered primarily through genome-wide association studies of complex behavioral phenotypes including results on substance use, personality, fertility, schizophrenia, depression, and endophenotypes including brain structure and function. There are a small handful of replicated and robustly studied exceptions to this rule, including the effect of APO on Alzheimer's disease, and CHRNA5 on smoking behavior, and ALDH2 on alcohol use. On the other hand, when assessing effects according to the beta metric, there are a large number of genetic variants that have very large effects on complex behavioral phenotypes. The risk alleles within such variants are exceedingly rare, such that their large behavioral effects impact only a small number of individuals. Thus, when assessed at a population level using the R, 2. Metric. They account for only a small amount of the differences in risk between individuals in the population. Examples include variants within AP that result in familial forms of severe early onset Alzheimer's disease but affect only relatively few individuals. Compare this to risk alleles within APO, which pose much smaller risk compared to AP but are far more common and therefore affect a much greater proportion of the population. Finally, there are classical behavioral disorders that are genetically simple in their etiology, such as Huntington's disease. Huntington's is caused by a single autosomal dominant variant in the HTT gene, 
which is the only variant that accounts for any differences among individuals in their risk for developing the disease, assuming they live long enough. In the case of genetically simple and rare diseases such as Huntington's, the variant, R, 2, and the, O, R, are simultaneously large.